Hello and welcome to Movie vs. Book, Jurassic Park, published in 1990 and written by Michael Crichton, with its odd combination of amusement parks, science, dinosaurs, and even the chaos theory, it oozed strangeness. Yet it worked perfectly and became Crichton's signature novel. It did so well that companies like Sony, Warner Brothers, 20th Century Fox bid for the rights to adapt it into a movie. Eventually, Universal won the rights, and three years later, came Jurassic Park, the movie. Helmed by Steven Spielberg, this movie wowed audiences with the sheer size and scope of the dinosaurs. The world really hadn't seen anything like this on screen before, so naturally it became a very big hit, and even not long ago had a 3D re-release. So both were met with high praise by the audience and critics alike. But which is the superior version? Spoiler alert! The fundamentals are the same in both versions. A rich man creates dinosaurs from left behind DNA in mosquitoes, puts them in a park, brings over a group of professionals to assess the park, and then all hell breaks loose. But, as similar as there are, there are differences. The biggest differences, though, definitely lies within the characters. Lex and Tim, the two children's personalities, were altered for the movie, and rightly so, because in the book, it was Tim who was the dinosaur enthusiast and the computer expert, leaving Lex the only job of whining and generally being annoying. Whereas in the movie, while Tim was still the dinosaur enthusiast, Lex was the computer expert, giving them both a job to do within the movie. Now, I do understand the realism of not all kids would be useful in this kind of dinosaur about to eat your situation, but I kind of prefer all characters to have a point other than mine in a movie, so I think it was a change for the best. Another big difference is the Donald Gennaro character, you know, this guy. In the movie, he was a coward, only interested in money. He left the kids alone in the T-Rex paddock and hid in the toilets, waiting for karma to strike and... In the book, though, Gennaro was a much more brave individual. He never left the kids for the T-Rex to chomp down on them. Instead, he never went on the tour to begin with. It was a staff member who was with the kids and then left them and then later got it by baby T-Rex, so that similarity did come across. Instead, once he learned about the kids and Grant being stranded in the park, Gennaro went out with Muldoon and tried to save them, and he even insisted in neutralising the T-Rex. So yeah, the lawyer was very different in the book from the film, and he actually became a favourite character in the book. Like most people, I saw the film way before reading the book, and now having read the book, it does annoy me that one of my favourite characters was just easily replaced by a cowering staff member. But at the same time, I do understand it. Everyone hates lawyers, right? So yeah, make him a coward and let him get eaten on the toilet by a T-Rex. Those are the biggest character differences. Others, which are a bit smaller, include things like Grant not liking children and movie, but loving children in the book, and other characters getting more of a spotlight, such as the John Woo character, who really only had a few appearances in the movie, but I get that, a book has uh, much more room to breathe than a movie does. So, it was inevitable that some characters would get their parts cut down a bit. While we're on the subject of books having more breathing room than movies, let's talk about some of the story arcs in both. The central story of both is that there are a group of people who are stuck on an island with a load of dinosaurs. But both have this little extra story, which is this rival company pays a member of Jurassic Park to steal the dinosaur embryos and he has to cut the power to do so, thus releasing the dinosaurs. Now, both of them just use this as an explanation as to why the dinosaurs escape, and it is an okay explanation, but neither of them really go that far into it. Now, the story of that is carried on in the book version of The Lost World, which is the sequel, and is so much better than the movie, but I think we'll get to that another day. In the book, while stranded in the park, Grant and the kids see these raptors jump on one of the automated boats that goes from the island to the mainland. 
with the power out, they can't just phone someone about it. So they have to travel through the jungle to get back to the central hub to warn the people to recall the boat. This doesn't happen in the movie, and some have questioned why they don't just stay somewhere that they think is safe, like up in a tree or something, while um, some of the others get the power back on and come and rescue them. So it does explain why they actually go out and actively try and find their way back. That's about it for story arcs that didn't make its way into the movie. Um, there are other things like characters not finding themselves in situations similar to what they did in the book. Um, like There was a bit where Grant and the kids were sailing down a river and they were being attacked by the Tyrannosaur. And that scene did get altered a bit and then recreated in Jurassic Park 3 when they were sailing through the aviary with the pterodactyl thing. So even even the warped, it did make it in there, which I'm kind of pleased to see. And also, at the beginning of The Lost World, that little girl who got attacked by the compies while she was on holiday, that was actually very similar to a scene that happened in... a scene, a chapter that happened in Jurassic Park, the book. So I do like that these things make it make their way into the sequels of the movies, even though they're not as good, but that's a story for another time. The book's prologue, The Bite of the Raptor. This is honestly the best opening chapter of any book I've ever read. It sets the tone of the book perfectly. It's set in the construction period of Jurassic Park, and one of the workers gets bit by a creature. Bet you can guess by the title it was a raptor. And anyway, it's about a woman who is trying to comfort him before he dies. Well, it was inevitable he was going to die, they were trying to save his life, but it was bordering on comforting before he dies. Way back in my Carnosaur review, my first review, so nostalgic about that, Anyway, I did rip into the film about having a scene that was similar to this chapter. And I don't think Carnosaur ripped it directly from the book. I think it was just coincidence, to be honest. And if you were wondering why I ripped into it so much, it's because it was a fairly poor scene that was similar to my favourite chapter in any book. So if you were wondering, that's why. There was a scene at the start of the Jurassic Park movie that was similar to the prologue to the book, but I think it's different enough to be unique in itself and does work for the movie, but I think I still prefer the book's opening prologue, partly because it paints much more of a graphic picture, but that's just imagination versus visual effects. Now for the film. The ending to the movie. The book and the movie have two very different endings. In the book, it actually ends after Grant comes face to face with the raptors, which is also different as well, rather than being in the visitor's hub with Sadler and the kids. He's on his own, he's in one of the science labs, and he's throwing poisoned eggs at the raptors. It's pretty clever and a pretty good way um, to kill the raptors in the book, and then it continues to him studying the raptors in the natural habitat, which is later on a different I don't know uh, what do you call them, a collection of raptors, a clan, a group, I don't know. Um, and then it ends up to them calling in an airstrike and blowing up the entire island. But in the movie, the ending is different. You've probably all seen it, the suspenseful chase between the raptors and humans. They get cornered in the visiting shelter, the raptors coming up about and leaps forwards and then the T-Rex just comes in and Saves the day. Well, not really saves the day, just wanted to eat something, I guess. And then the humans get away. And it's just so much fun to watch that I don't care that it doesn't make any sense that these extremely good hunters didn't notice this giant thing that the movie put so much emphasis on the fact that the ground quakes while it walks. So, I don't care, it's just good stuff our way the bad, and it's honestly a movie's job just to provide more good stuff than it does the bad, and Jurassic Park the movie does. So, it comes down to this. Which is better, the movie or the book? Honestly, hands down, the book. 
It has so much detail. It is a really compelling read, and nothing against the movie, but it just doesn't match up to it. I mean, it's a really good movie. I love it. Always have, always will, but the book is the best. It even manages to talk about the databases used in Jurassic Park and make that interesting and not bore the hell out of you. And honestly, I can't give the book a bigger compliment than that. So with that said, see you next time.